Hey everybody, T-Man again bringing you guys another video, and this is my weekly review of last night's Monday Night Raw um, episode, the last episode before uh, uh, WWE's uh, pay-per-view on the WWE Network Fastlane. Um, Okay, let's uh, begin the, the, the review. I'm going to go in-depth in, in just about every single pro, uh, segment that we had last night. Um, that's significant, you know, especially the, since this is the last uh, 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 big show. I mean, we still got SmackDown, but, you know, the big uh, show, which is Raw before... Uh, um, before Fastlane, we, we kicked off the show uh, last night with another promo um, with uh, John Cena, which was it was a nice it was a different uh, step in pace. It's, it was it was kind of nice seeing an opening promo. Uh, usually, all, all the opening segments usually begin with either uh, Triple H or uh, uh, the Authority, Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns, since that's kind of the main. Uh, um, the main storyline and made sense but but we got to see it open up with John Cena and Rusev which is the second uh probably main storyline going on right now and uh it, it was good john cena uh, as always i mean john cena's always been a good promo guy and i think he hit it out of the park last night with a good promo and uh getting a little bit of revenge on rusev because uh, if you remember uh, last week or the previous week rusev uh threw uh, uh cena into the titan tron or whatever cena getting revenge on him after cutting his promo running up to the ramp having a nice little fight good little build up on the ramp Cena throwing them into the Tron um, got fans real pumped up for that and the part that I liked uh, a lot was uh, when Cena grabbed the United States title held it up over his head I like that in many ways and look and let me tell you exactly why I like that why I liked Cena holding up the US belt because I mean as those of you who've watched my videos known that I don't think um, they really give the titles, uh, especially the Intercontinental and United States title, enough prestige. Having a main star, probably the face of the company, John Cena, wanting that United States title, it gives that title a lot of credibility, saying this is a main title here in the WWE. And especially uh, with the guy that's holding the title, Rusev, being the guy that has not been pinned or submitted in a year, having the guy, John Cena, it's making that title mean something again. And, and it's really good to see... Uh, the United States title having uh, some importance. Now it kind of reminds me of uh, what the heavyweight title was. Um, yeah, WWE's version of the heavyweight title uh, it, during its last couple of years. If you guys remember the last couple of years when WWE had the WWE title and the World Heavyweight title, that World Heavyweight title kind of, to me, felt like what the Intercontinental and the United States Heavyweight title used to be. It used to be uh, that big. And the Heavyweight title kind of became like that, if you guys know what I mean. And so it's kind of really nice to see that, uh, you know, them... Uh, WWE really starting to build up the United States title by having one of their top names, John Cena, or one of the top guys, especially in this generation, wanting the United States title. It was really nice to see. Whether or not he's going to win or not, I'm going to be, as always, before a pay-per-view, I'll be doing my uh, uh, preview video of... Uh, um, a fast lane, uh, giving you guys what I think of that outcome. But anyways, pertains to the raw segment. I thought it was a really cool segment um, for uh, for John Cena. Really cool. Uh, we move on to Dean Ambrose and Luke Harper, and um, I kind of like the storyline. Uh, 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 Involving uh, uh, Dean Ambrose. Uh, Dean Ambrose um, g going around for the last couple of weeks. I mean, I think this uh, rivalry with Bad News Barrett is really the give one of their top fan favorites, Dean Ambrose, something to do. And um, I have a feeling they are going to give him the Intercontinental title. And I'll, I'll talk a lot about that through this video and also my preview video. But uh, Dean Ambrose, um, <laughs> like that, you know, has been going around saying he wants an Intercontinental title shot. As again, like the United States, I like seeing wrestlers wanting these titles for a long time. These Intercontinental and United States titles have not meant nothing. The guys have them, and they're so worried about getting the heavyweight title. They don't worry about the title that they do have, the Intercontinental in the U.S. These champions, and now you've seen these wrestlers wanting these titles. And Dean Ambrose, for the last few weeks, been going around saying that he wants the title um 
uh, bad news bear being the good heel saying no you gotta earn your shot uh, at, at my belt you know you gotta earn your way to my title and I, I really like their little back and forth and then Ambrose has been going around beating former Intercontinental Champions and that's what led us to last night's uh, match on Raw between uh, um, Ambrose and Luke Harper and let me tell you something about Luke Harper for being such a big guy, he's a great worker. I mean, he really is. And and and, and in my opinion, you know me, I really like uh, good storylines, but I also like great in-ring wrestling. I'm all, I've always been a fan of great in-ring wrestling, as you guys know. And I really think that Dean Ambrose um, and Luke Harper had a really solid match. And, and, I mean, they're both good workers. They had a really great solid match. Dean Ambrose picking up the win there. And... Uh, um, and what's what was funny about that was he had a uh, he had a contract in hand, uh, and he said by the end of the night he was going to make Bad News Barrett uh, sign that, and we're going to get down to that because I'm going to be going through these segments in order. Uh, on, on Raw, and uh, throughout the night, Dean Ambrose had a, a, some pretty cool little uh, promo segments in, in in the backstage area. I thought was pretty good. We move on from there to a Bray Wyatt promo, obviously cutting a promo um, on the Undertaker without saying his name, real cryptic, saying that you know, talk about icons and how he used to look up to him. But Bray Wyatt being probably one of the best um, promo guys right now. Um, in the WWE, I mean, by far, I I love this guy's promos. Um, everybody that I I see, it just seems like, you know, you could tell they're reading off a script. And with Bray Wyatt, it just comes out so natural. He is so good at cutting promos. Big fan of him. Um, a little scared in case if you guys didn't know, I was reading a lot of backstage stuff on on, on wrestling websites, um, saying that the dark match last night, the dark main event was Bray Wyatt John Cena, and Bray Wyatt was. Um, he got sick. He uh, was vomiting the, um, out, uh, through the middle of the match or after the match. I didn't know the details, but uh, he was sick to his stomach and he vomited. So I, I need to read and find out more follow-ups on how he's doing on that. But that was the dark main, uh, main event last night. I've been robbing off there, so I'm hoping Bray Wyatt was okay. You know, hopefully... Uh, um, uh, God willing, it was just the flu. You know, you know, wrestlers... Um, all the time, you know, they, they have to wrestle through different types of uh, injuries and sickness. I mean, they get sick just like everyone does. We're all human. And um, I'm hoping it was just like a flu or whatever. And he uh, he just uh, he got sick. Hopefully it was nothing serious. Uh, moving on from there, I really like the backstage promo uh, with Goldust, Stardust, and Dusty Rhodes. Um, I thought this was really good. Obviously, you know, Dusty Rhodes there to... Uh, 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 put the Rhodes brothers, Dusty and Cody, back together, and I really liked over and over how they're really making the audience know that Cody Rhodes is being consumed now by uh, the character Stardust. I, I, I really like this uh, the story that they're putting putting with Cody because we all know Goldust is going to be retiring soon. This is their way of. Uh, giving Goldust one last one-on-one -on -one rivalry with his brother and at the same time setting up Cody Rhodes in the in the future as his Stardust character by by pretty much saying that Stardust is dead okay I am uh, I mean not Stardust excuse me Cody is dead I am Stardust now and I like the backstage segment with Dusty you know saying Cody we're family we're family I really like that uh, the only thing um I recruit uh, um I would fix in that would it would be that I wish that uh, uh, Dusty would have uh, accompanied Stardust and Goldust to the ring. Um, so they had their match right after that backstage uh, um, segment with the New Day, and uh, um, Goldust and Stardust, you know. You know, you could see them uh, helping each other, holding each other, and even after uh, the New Day won, the New Day won the match, and after that, you could see uh, uh, Stardust helping out uh, Dusty for a while, but you knew, you knew something was going to happen. You knew, um... You knew Dust. You knew Stardust was on a turn on on Goldust. 
you knew that and uh, um and, and sure enough he did you know it looked like he was helping them up they were setting it up like when is it going to happen then it finally happened and it was a good segment well, what i would have changed differently about that was i would have liked it if dusty was out there and i think it would have meant more i mean goldust was already out there wouldn't it meant more if like let's say Stardust didn't really help Goldust or really tease that the him helping him, and then a uh, Dusty saying help your brother you know help your brother up and then Dusty coming into the ring and then what if he like kicked Dusty his dad in the in in, in the cojones you know, in the in the balls or whacked him or just something that would hurt Dusty and and then having Golda set on fire I think that would have really set this rivalry personal would have sent the message to Goldust and Dusty that okay Stardust is now way out there his, his uh, um, there he there is no coming back for, for from where Cody is at his character um, I think the, uh, um, I think that would have been a better angle or at least that's what I would have did I would have put more personal heat behind it. You know, instead of just having the typical brother turning on the brother and, you know, they didn't announce the match, but I would imagine that match would probably happen. Um, they, they would probably announce that probably on SmackDown and probably happen on a uh, fast lane. I would personally love to see that match happen, maybe like on the pre-show of WrestleMania. I don't know if if they'll want or have enough uh, in them to keep this storyline going on without them having a one-on-one -on -one match till WrestleMania. I would like to see that because, you know, if this is Goldust's last hurrah, which everyone's saying it is, I would love to see. And I think, uh, I think Dustin has been around for so long. I think the Goldust character is so iconic. He's been the Goldust character for 20 years. Think about that. 20 years uh, on being the Goldust character. I think he deserves, that character deserves to be in the spotlight at WrestleMania. Even if it's the one hour pre-show that WWE does on the network, I think he deserves it. I think, I, I really think Dustin Rhodes deserves that. And I'm hoping, even if they do have the match at Fastlane, uh, have a rematch, have something. And ha even if he loses, uh, goes over the match, or doesn't at Mania, give him that moment, that one on one match with, with, with that 75,000 crowd going nuts and giving him one last salute because I think the man deserves it. I really do. I think Goldust deserves it. We move on from there to Roman Reigns uh, versus Kane. <laughs> I like this match a lot. You know, I really like what they're doing with Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. Um, you know, the two baby faces pitting them up against each other. You know, pretty much the future. The future. And I really like what WWE is kind of doing. Is I, I always usually slam WWE, uh, but I also go and give them their. I'm just calling it how I see it. I will give them props if I like something. You know, I'm not, I'm not one of those guys. I'm just hating WWE all the time. I'm calling it how I like it. If something's bullshit that I see on, on watching it, I'm going to say that. If it's great, I'm going to say it. And, and, you know, I. I could honestly say I think what I really like about the Roman Reigns Daniel Bryan is I don't know where they're going with this. I mean, yeah, we hear the rumors now that they're saying that it's going to be a triple threat match at WrestleMania, but Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns, and Brock Lesnar. But I don't know where this story is going. Most of the time in the WWE, I know where they're going. I have no clue where, uh, uh, um, how the outcome of this match is going to go at Fastlane. I mean, they, they could have Roman Reigns win. They could have Daniel Bryan win, which I'm thinking that's what they're going to do. And then Roman's going to somehow get back in the match in the three-way if that rumor is true. And they are doing that three-way at, at uh, Mania. But anyways, Roman Reigns and Kane. And what I liked about it was you had Daniel Bryan out there to antagonize uh, a Roman and it was really fun to see you had throughout the match Daniel Bryan's doing commentary and throughout the match he's walking around doing the yes chance getting the fans completely behind him and not focused on the match between uh, Ro uh, Roman Reigns and uh, Kane and I, I really liked how that went it was it, 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 it was really fun it was really good and you could tell um, Roman was mad to set up that beef with uh, Daniel Bryan so I thought it was a really cool segment I, I believe uh, I'm sorry I don't know the out I think Roman won that match I'm pretty sure Roman won that match 
Moving on from there, we move on to a backstage segment between uh, uh, Paige. Uh, Naked Paige was trending <laughs> last night on uh, on Twitter with uh, Nikki Bella going in and st stealing the ring gear of Paige. And then Paige coming out in a towel. And then uh, her grabbing one of the rosebuds were out there in this uh, rainbowish little cheerleading little colorful outfit you probably wouldn't see Paige in. And Paige grabbed her and said come with me to the locker room so obviously she was putting on her mat uh, her uh, uh, putting on her new ring gear which was one of the rosebuds outfit thought that was really uh really funny and then we had our divas match of the night uh which was Paige versus summer uh <laughs> Had a really fun match. I mean, I, I just felt like uh, that match was there just to show the Divas. I think they could have did a little bit more with it. And then we had Nikki coming out. Paige winning the match. Nikki cutting a promo on this Sunday. And uh, setting up that match between Paige and Nikki uh, this Sunday. So, uh, um... It was okay. I, I just felt like uh, they could have did a little bit more with the Diva segment, but uh, I felt like they just rushed them out there, showed them real quick, just to let them, <laughs> kind of just to let us know they're there. That, 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 at least that's what it felt like to me. It felt like, you know, they were there just to, you know, show them. Uh, in, in other words, but anyways, I, I thought it was funny the whole naked page thing and her coming out with a colorful outfit because you know she always wears black and stuff. So I thought that was um, I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, but all in all, I, I think they could have did a little bit more. Um, moving on from that, we had uh, Seth Rollins versus uh, Dolph Ziggler, and again. Last week, I thought Dolph Ziggler had the match of the week with. Um, with Bray Wyatt, I think this week he had the match of the week. I, I, I actually, I guess the match of the match of the night on Raw. Uh, I guess you could call it really a toss up between Ambrose and Luke Harper, and uh, Dolph Ziggler and Roman Re and not Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins. I'm sorry, Dol Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins. They had a hellacious match. It was a very okay. First of all, it was a really short match between uh, Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins because uh, I think they're doing a mistake here. Obviously, we're going to see them in some fashion at uh, at Fastlane. I think from the way they, they showed Eric Rowan and Ryback, I think we're probably going most likely, I don't know if it's been announced, but as I'm shooting this video, it hasn't been announced. Um, that I'm pretty sure we're going to see a six-man tag between the authority of being uh, Seth Rollins, Kane, and Big Show, or... If not Kane and Big Show, the J&J um, uh, &J security, most likely Kane and Big Show. I would hope so to have a better match against uh, Ziggler, Ryback, and Eric Rowan. Even, even though I would rather just see a one-on-one -on -one match between Dolph Ziggler and uh, Seth Rollins. Because we didn't get a finish in that match. It was a short match. It was DQ, a disqualification. And anyways, man, Seth Rollins, I think, by far, is one of the best... Uh, Best guys, best guys on the on the roster by far in the in ring, um, uh, in the in ring part of it, and even outside. I think they could do a lot more, and I think it's a shame having a guy like Dolph Ziggler on that roster. And I don't think they really uh, um, do as much as they could with him. And you, you know, you know, let me tell you something. If I have the whole WWE roster, okay, let's say none of the storylines exist right now, you have the whole roster of the WWE and I was starting fresh and I was putting straps on each guy I think I would put the the WWE title on uh, Dolph Ziggler because I believe if you gave him the ball you know he's going to perform and blow that crowd away in an in-ring in the in-ring wrestling and I think if you actually give him the the ball to run with it I think he could knock the promos out of the park and really set things up and you know I really do I, I think a lot of Dolph Ziggler and I, I, I'm I really am a big fan of him uh, moving on from that we move on to a Triple H promo with Ric Flair <coughs> Triple H coming out, cutting a promo on Sting, um, and here's the, uh, what I think they're doing wrong with this. I think, I think every week they're 
they're kind of doing too much to set up a uh, just a confrontation with them just having a in-ring promo segment to lead up to WrestleMania about. I think th they might be leading fans to think that they're going to be meeting in a match because I, uh, from time to time they're wording um, they're wording that whole thing diff uh, really wrong in my opinion. They're saying, "Oh, um, at Fastlane they're going to meet face to face." Well, back in the day, meeting face to face would be a match, and and the way they're going about it, I mean, I, I know there's been like face to face confrontations, and I know that's what they're meaning the 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 uh, um the pull off that that they're just that Triple H is just going to confront him and talk to him, and if it about him leaving WWE, and he says if he needed to, he will get physical with Sting. I think, uh, uh, I, I think, like I said, I think they're re really kind of uh, uh, misleading fans. Uh, some fans is like, to, like if you're just a casual um, watcher and really don't know how WWE may work, you may come under the impression that Sting and Triple H is going to wrestle at uh, Fastlane, and they're not. He's just calling them out. And like I said uh, about last week, I thought it was funny, even though it was a really good promo. Uh, um, uh, not promo, but a really good segment with, with Triple H uh, wanting the answer. Um, even though I thought it was a good segment, I thought it was kind of uh, stupid at the same time. That will I want you to come out, meet me face to face, to accept to meet me face to face again in two weeks, where we're going to talk and pr and lead up to a match at WrestleMania. I I, um, I thought that was a little bit too much. Moving on from that, we got the Ascension versus a nobody, literally a nobody, I'm going to talk about that right now, and Darren Young. Okay, first of all, I don't know the name of this nobody that they got uh, to team up with Darren Young to face the Ascension, but at least plug that poor kid's name. <laughs> <laughs> poor, I mean, please give us the poor kid's name. He's probably an independent wrestler. I don't know if he's working for NXT or what his story is. But, you know, you could have at least, like, just gave the kid's name. Like, at first, like, uh, for first they announced Darren Young, the, the ring announcer. And then right before they announced Darren Young, uh, I mean, after they announced Dar Darren Young and they're about to announce his partner, the Ascension music comes up. And then, like, the announcers were even kind of uh, joking around about it. Well, we never did get the name of his partner. Come on, at least give this kid a, uh, I understand they're trying to make it come off as uh, the Ascension facing another um, local wrestler, but give this local wrestler a name, man. I mean, plug him, and if the guy's on the independent scene or whatever, give him some work, WWE. I mean, let the name go out there. Let, you know, um, plug his Twitter or something, say, hey, this independent wrestler or whatever. I'm hoping he's an NXT guy and he's already under contract that's what I'm hoping for and and then that way he doesn't really need to be plugged and that means he's getting paid and WWE ha has a long-term plan for this kid in NXT as a dev developmental or whatever but anyways if he's not you know uh, oof, that's really bad anyways the ascension squashed him and, and what was cool out of that segment was we saw Titus O'Neil coming out Titus O'Neil teaming back up with Darren Young to reform the primetime players, and most likely, I almost guarantee it that we're probably going to see the primetime players versus the Ascension at a uh, fast lane, either in the pre show or the actual uh, pay per view itself. Um, anyways, that was uh, uh, I think I think that's pretty good. I guess uh, I I could rant on forever about what I think of the Ascension, and I think I'll do that in my preview video of uh, Fastlane if they announce that. I'll, I'll, I just think they've been booking the Ascension wrong and too gimmicky. My God, so gimmicky! I could do a whole video alone on the Ascension being too gimmicky. Oh Jesus, and a bad gimmick. On top of that, oof, I'm hearing some noise. Hopefully my son's not up from his nap. But uh, let's move on real quickly. The Miz versus Bad News Barrett. I'm going to just touch on this real briefly. 
uh, or Ms. Ms. Dow, sorry. Uh, bad news, Barrett picking up the win. Ambrose coming out, locking his um, his arms on the turnbuckle, making Bad News Barrett sign the contract to meet Dean Ambrose. Thought it was a very funny segment. Uh, good way to trap the heel into uh, meeting the babyface Dean Ambrose on the match. And like I said before, I love Bad News Barrett. I wish they did a lot more with Bad News Barrett. Um, I think having him lose a lot of matches, a lot of non-title matches, right after he won the title, I don't think, even though he had a title, I don't think they really put Bad News Barrett over the last month. And I do think Dean Ambrose is on the win. I do think that's best because this is just what I think. I haven't read any rumors. I haven't done anything. But I'm really hoping if they have Dean Ambrose win, they would set up a match between Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania against Dolph Ziggler. That is what I'm hoping for. That is what I want to see is Dolph Ziggler, Dean Ambrose, WrestleMania, Intercontinental title. It'll remind me of the old WrestleMania days, like the early WrestleMania days, all the way up to the Attitude Era, when they the Intercontinental title match at WrestleMania used to generally steal the show at WrestleMania. That's what I'm hoping for between Dolph Ziggler and, and Dean Ambrose, and I'm hoping they go that route. I, I mean, this is just me hoping i haven't heard any rumors that there's going to be a dolph ziggler versus dean ambrose wrestlemania intercontinental title match but that's what i'm hoping for M moving on from that uh, we, uh real quick we got a mixed tag team match between the usos uh well not uh well jimmy uso or jay uso the uso that's married to uh to what's her name naomi versus uh natalia and her husband tyson kidd uh with uh the uso picking up the win and you had tyson kidd badgering uh, natalia about the loss and you had cesaro up there and as we all know we're going to see cesaro and tyson kidd versus the usos at uh fast lane i will be giving of course my my picks and predictions of where i think they're going with that on my fast lane review video Ending the show, Big Show versus Daniel Bryan. Thought it was a very good match. Um, actually, no, I should rephrase that. I thought it was an entertaining, entertaining segment. Not uh, the best in-ring work of, uh, uh, from Big Show and Daniel Bryan, but what I liked was, again, just like we saw earlier in the night with Daniel Bryan kind of getting the crowd out of it, you had Roman Reigns kind of reversing uh, the tables on Daniel Bryan. And while Daniel Bryan was just wrestling the Big Show, you had um, Roman signing autographs to all the fans, taking pictures, taking the, 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 the fans out of the match making Daniel Bryan upset about it and then ending the match you have um, uh, Roman Reigns coming in interfering uh, doing the Superman punch or spear I forgot which one of the two he did on the Big Show making it a disqualification Big Show winning having Daniel Bryan irate about that uh, completely mad having them at odds in the ring yelling then it looked like they were going to shake hands and then they started fighting all over the place uh, making the fans choose which one of the two that you want then you had all the referees and everybody else separating the two it had a really old school feel to it i really like that segment uh usually i don't like to rush my videos but this one i started really late and my baby son should be waking up from his nap any minute. So I will be touching on this match on the main event. Uh, that's what I'm going to start my preview video on Fastlane. I'm going to start with the main event and work my way down the card for I can give this main event the full video and attention that that match deserves. Anyways, guys, this will conclude my Monday Night Raw review. Um, the, the, this Raw was a pretty good it was a decent episode of raw um a lot better than last month's uh um uh monday night raws before the raw rumbles and stuff in my opinion i've liked them a lot more uh um last week and this week and i'm hoping uh next week will probably be i'm hoping for the best raw in at least the last couple months that's what i'm hoping for for next week because next week is going to be the pay-per-view after fast lane and it's going to be the monday night raw that's going to set the tone for wrestlemania it's going to be the, uh, the 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 monday night raw after the big pay-per-view and the monday night raw the first monday night raw leading into the march the wrestlemania 
anyways guys hopefully you like this video so please leave your comments or what you think of the video what what other videos you would like to see me shoot and i'll be happy to either comment or shoot a video on them until the next one i hope this video catches you in a good place and i'll see you for the next one